Okay, I'm getting my eyeshadows all set up for, well, today. Um, today, Strawberry Fields. Today, today is the last of my spring looks. I've been doing spring looks all for the last five days. Today's the last one. Just throwing these in now. Oh, I'm putting them on the wrong layer. No wonder it looked kind of funny. These are mattes. I keep my mattes and my shimmer shadows separate. So we've got that guy. We got this guy. This one. Is that it? Yeah. All right. Going back to the other layer. So whenever you somebody gets here, just say hey. Hey, how are you? Um. Yeah. So I'm just popping these. In. Oh, that might be the wrong way anyway. Paris. Mama, I was talking on my Instagram this weekend about colors that are, um, what am I thinking? Colors that eek, are great prep colors. I don't think that's the right way to say it. <laughs> All right. Good morning, Desiree. Okay, my colors are on. I've been struggling with contour lately. I love my cedar, I miss my indigo, but my indigo is just, it's not great, especially around my nose. I've been just having such a hard time. Good morning, Sherry. Um, I've been having just a hard time with contouring my nose, and I think it's because I'm using indigo, and indigo is just a touch too dark, so I think I'm gonna go back to, back to cedar. So I'm gonna switch those around. I just keep them all in here, but hi, hello, how are you? I feel like, have I been here live lately? I do like indigo as a lip liner. It's been my favorite lip condo combo condo. Is indigo with pink grapefruit with the lip oil. It it's so good. Okay. You've been mixing henna with indigo. See, henna and astoria are two colors I have not been able to wear. They make me look very dirty. I don't know. Maybe I should try that sometime. Not today. Okay. Let's do our makeup. I am doing a spring eye look. I am gonna do my eyeshadow first. And this is the last of the collection. And not gonna lie, I'm pretty excited about it. This is Sedona. This one is Riviera. And then this one is Angel's Landing. These are really close. Let's swatch them. I saw, I, I, I'm not gonna lie. When I picked my combo in my, um, what made you decide to change your contour color? I just, I've always loved, I'm in my pajamas, I'm business on the top and pajamas on the bottom. Um, I've always worn indigo when I was blonde. And then when I went dark, I felt like indigo didn't sit right. So then I was using stone and olive and then cedar came out and then I was obsessed with cedar. And then I've just been missing. I've also been missing, honestly, I saw a picture on my husband's phone pop up. Cause you know how it like, he has his phone set up where something pops up and I just, I'm always, anyway, this picture popped up and he'll show them to me every once in a while, me with the girls. And I saw my eyeshadow in the picture and it was from years ago, even before saying, I miss, you know how you just miss an old look? It's, it's been that reason. I just, I've missed my old brown smoky eyes. I've been missing my contour of indigo and, but my scar, my hyperpigmentation spot here has been rough <laughs> it just pulls through I didn't do my skincare this morning oh no um oh no okay let's see I've been trying a new skincare and it's been really good so I'm kind of really bummed that I forgot to do it this morning it's just been a really it's today's the first day of spring break for us here so yeah all right I'm gonna get into this we're gonna be using a few brushes I've been I'm gonna use the powder brush and I'm going to say I've been really loving the application with this brush. It's been so good. All right, I'm going to use that brush today, and I'm going to get my blend brush out, and I'm trying to find an eyeshadow brush. Ooh, definitely the line brush. I need to clean that. And where's my eyeshadow brush? Where is it? You think I, I did so good about getting everything all prepped on here, about, like, shopping and all that stuff. Okay, so... We're gonna prep the lids. I have not gotten my eyeshadow primer. This was something somebody commented on on my videos before about how eyeshadow primer makes your eyeshadows more pigmented and vibrant. 
So I ordered one and I'm waiting for it to get here. So for now, I'm still using my brightening and I'm gonna do one eye brightening, one eye the primer and we'll see how it goes. I wanna see longevity, I wanna see pigments, all the things, so we'll see. All right, so I'm just grabbing white peach, canceling it out of the colors and then giving myself just a blank canvas. And then we're gonna go in with my setting powder and we're just gonna go over and set it. This is just more convenient. Eyeshadows work too, and it just depends on your tone and what you're looking for. I really like Cupcake as a prep because it's so bright and light, and so I feel like it makes that pigmentation that I was talking about show. All right, so we're gonna go into the colors. Let's swatch these. All right, here's Riviera. I just feel like they, I will say Angel's Landing looks much more of a higher fleck. So here's Riviera, very pretty. And then here is Angel's Landing. Got my Easter nails on. They're the same. <laughs> I do pick the combos when I do this on Facebook. I love doing this on Facebook because I just, I like seeing what people like to see and it gives me an idea of the style of makeup everybody likes. I do think sometimes people pick the wild ones because they're like, try it. <laughs> like blue do it <laughs> but these are really really close in color like they look like the same color I will say I think Angel's Landing is a little more um because this is Angel's Landing I think it's a little uh, crumblier I want to say Angel's Landing to me uh, eyes on not here this one comes off as being a little more bright and Riviera is a bit deeper like by this much <laughs> they're the same it's funny but I like going in and just like finding combinations and then throwing them all together and putting letters on it and letting people vote and so it's just fun it gets me to try new things and I'll say before saying I just wear the same thing every single day and I think a lot of us are like that and doing this, it's made it so that I can try. I, I would have never tried oranges had I not been doing this. I would have never put bright pink on without doing this. So it's been really fun. All right, we're going to grab our colors here. I'm going to use Angel's Landing with the fluffy end just to put a little shimmer. So here's what I like about these shimmers is you can take a fluffy brush and you could put these on and they don't turn your lid that bronzy shimmer, but it allows the flex to go on and add just a pop of shimmer under the brow. I like doing that. It just gives it some lift. And now we're gonna go and I'm gonna make, I'm gonna use Sedona and I'm gonna make Sedona a couple different colors and I'm gonna use it as my transition color. I'm gonna deepen it to make it my outer corner color and my lower lash line. I like colors that can be more than one color. And so it just makes, it gives you more bang for your space in your palette. So when you're putting colors in like Philly, Lullaby, Philly is out of stock with no ETA. Just putting that out there. We don't know when it's coming back. Saint sent us something over the weekend saying it's out of stock. We do not know when <laughs> it'll be back, but it's been out for a while, but you can take colors and make them more than one. Lullaby is really good at that Sedona Oak, a lot of them. And so, yeah, so we're taking Sedona and I'm going to make this my transition color. So I'm just going to push this onto this outer corner and into that crease, but I'm holding my brush straight up and down and I don't know what's going on out there except spring break. And then I'm just swirling this up and I'm pushing on that brow bone to bring this up and out. And this, you could stop there. Honestly, you could just add a little bit of shimmer and you could stop there if you just like a nice everyday color. And so I'm just pushing that on the outside. I like the base of my color on the outside of my lid, outside of the crease over here. I also like doing my eyeshadow first because it makes for easy cleanup. If there's fallout, if you have cream or balm or any of that stuff on your face and under your eyes and there's fallout, it's gonna mix with your makeup. It's gonna change the color of it a little bit, especially when you're working with darker colors. So doing this first makes for easy cleanup. So I'm just swirling and blending and blending and blending. Boom, isn't that pretty? It's, Sedona's a really great one and done color. 
swirling on the outside, pushing on that brow bone. I'm not going into the crease, I'm going under the brow bone. It seems like a crease. I have a, I don't wanna say I have a prominent brow bone, but is that prominent? <laughs> So I use my brow bone as my guide and I just hold my brush straight up and down and push that on there and then I just blend it up and out. I always go up and out because I want lift, all the lift I can get. All right, there we go. I'm gonna switch to the small end and we're gonna press into this and we're gonna deepen it and we're gonna push this. I'm not doing a greater than less than, I'm just using the dense end short end to have it be a bit darker and I'm just pushing 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 and then we'll take what's left and go under the lash line here there we go it does open the eye it's really funny the way your brows and your eyeshadow can change the total shape of your eye all right grabbing that with the dense end again and again not I'm just pushing in up and down up and down it's not it's not any this is, this is goof proof, goof proof. Just push in, push in, push in, push in, push in. If you have really mature eyes, tapping works. And then just bring it all the way over. You can absolutely do that. I like a good gradient look. I'm not gonna lie. I've been really struggling with not grabbing my darker browns and adding them to all the eye colors because I've been, I'm not gonna do any picks right now because I just really wanna get back to some good favorites of just browns and shimmers. Tawanda with everything. It's spring, so you can take all of your winter eyeshadow colors, throw Tawanda with it, and it's spring. Spring. Ta -da. <laughs> all right, so we have that on. I am gonna wet my brush just to show it as another color. So denser, short brushes will make it show up better. Adding some setting spray to your brush. So it's wet, and don't spray the, don't spray the eyeshadow, spray the brush. So we have the brush wet, you can see it's wet. And then we can go along the lash line here. See that? Isn't that nice? Going a little bit down right here. Isn't that good? It's good stuff right there. And then you just take this fluffy in and blend it out. Boom, three colors, one eyeshadow. Grabbing some more, tap it off. Helps with the fallout, going along the lash line. I am so bad at winking. Like I couldn't flirt with a guy to save my life. Good thing I'm married. <laughs> Good thing I'm married. All right. I certainly didn't get him with my winking abilities. Hi. <laughs> All right, there we go. I've also been taking a little bit <laughs> My Black Saint shirt. So this is actually a shirt that's available. I cut the neck off because I didn't like, it's a very stiff shirt. This is not a workout shirt unless you really want to sweat. But this is available. It has little wings on the back, but it is available on the website. Um, I'm actually tempted to cut the sleeves, not above the seam but just along because I think it could curl, but it wouldn't get out of hand. But it is a super, super cute shirt. Not gonna lie, it's not the most comfortable sh shirt, <coughs> but it's so cute. <laughs> yes, cut the neck off. <clears throat> I'm trying to remember how I measured it. I don't remember. I think I just put it on and I was like, snip, snip. <laughs> I always cut, if I'm cutting necks off of things, I'll go a little wider here. You can always pull it out. But when I come right here, I always go the, the seam, the collar where the stitching is. I always go right up against it right here. Otherwise, it's just a mess. But I do that with sweatshirts too. It's really cute with the Saint. I think it's a Saint. I don't like buying stuff that's a Saint University because I think it's weird. But they have Saint sweatshirts and it's really cute to do on those. And you can cut the sleeves off so it's very like 80s fun. And then this is just a shirt from Amazon. It came with a skirt, but it's cute. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna add some eyeliner and my Stila pen is toast. I need to get a new one. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do my eyeliner pencil 
and I'm going to use my etch brush and I am going to grab Salem. I don't like I don't like the cream eyeliner. It moves. It's just not pigmented enough. I love Salem, but I don't like Salem in my palette because, because I use Salem more as an eyeliner. I'm poking at the tin a lot. I like to just hold it because it can crumble because I'm poking. I mean, anytime you poke anything, it's just going to... So yeah. All right. We're going to grab some eyeliner. We're going to water line. Has anybody seen that that tight line in your lower lash line is coming back in? It's crazy. It's happening. It's all happening. Okay, I need a I need a mirror. You guys, the phone does not work. <laughs> all right. So I actually bought this shirt just because I wanted to cut the neck off because it just looked like such a cool shirt that it needed the neck cut off. If you're gonna, I don't know, do you size up when you do that? I got I got my normal medium. I don't know if you size up for something like that, but if you want to get all crazy with it, I would size up. And then I've seen where people cut up the sides and then they trim it and then they tie them. I don't know. I've seen where people do that. Okay, we're going to grab Salem now. And we're going to do some eyeliner. I like a good liner. And I'm going to use a wet brush. Hello. There we go. We're going to use the square end, not the smoking end. We're gonna use this nice little square end. We're gonna grab our setting spray, we're gonna spray it. And you don't need a whole lot. I always wipe it and then I go like this just to make it slim. And then we're gonna go in and I, again, see I poke it. And so it just makes it crumbly. And I'm just gonna press and press. It's probably a reason, another reason why it crumbles is because I tap it. Tap off excess. I'm gonna set and I'm pushing into my lashes here and then I'm gonna come out from my lashes and just come about a quarter of the way in because again, I like my eyes to look open and they're pretty hooded on the outside so this pushes my eyeliner down. I don't bring my wing out very far. I'm gonna grab it. I will say the setting spray on the brushes does dry fairly quickly. And then I'm going to come right here and I'm just going to get that inner line just like that. This is going to give the illusion my eyeliner goes all the way across and it really doesn't. And then I'm just stamping. If you have mature lids and you find it hard to do eyeliner because the lid has a lot of movement. And so taking a brush like this, this is a great brush for small eyes and for mature eyes because you can smoke things out and you can use this as a way of just blending, but this is great for eyeliner because you can just stamp it. Honey, please, we talked about this. Okay, did you make your beds? Yes. And you put your clothes away? Yes. And you brushed your teeth? Yes. Don't lie to me. You did. Go brush your teeth. No! <laughs> no! No! Okay, please stop. Um, are they, pause for this brought to you by Apple. They, they won't turn on. Oh, that's because they're probably toast. Can you guys give me just a minute? Oh, this one's on. I don't know whose it is. Stand by. Let's see how much battery is left. Is this one going to turn on? This one might. Oh, this, this one's, one's toast. toast. Okay, you guys got to share Ava's. <gasps> I know. Control emotions. We're live. Everybody on YouTube can see you. Yeah. It's tough. Door. I love you too. She's crying now. Now I feel like a bad mom. But I don't charge the iPads. They're for, yeah. <laughs> They're not for normal everyday consumption. They are purely for road trips. We're not, we're not device fam people, as I use YouTube all the time. <laughs> all right, grabbing that line, and we're going to set this liner and going into the lashes and I use this to just flick up and out and then I'll bring it in and sometimes I just like to let my lid work as a way of letting it have that swoop but I still feel like it oh my gosh Mom, yep mine was very close to out of batteries and that it's toast it's toast too okay I'm sorry not right now. I'm doing a live. I don't think they know what live means. Just a minute. Go. 
grab two so your sister has one too and then and then door. Daddy, who is this? Shut the door. Remember who cares for Easter Bunny? Bye bye. Spring break. <laughs> All right, getting this inner lash line, and then we're going to move on to the face. I'm going to talk about color correcting a little bit. I talk about color correcting every time, but that's because i got to do it. But I have stopped. Okay, that would be fun. I would size up if you plan on wearing it. Okay, I'm wearing a medium, and I have a shirt underneath. It's a crop. It's a, I don't like my bra strap showing because of First Wives Club, but <laughs> honestly, that's the reason why. <laughs> um I don't like, I don't know what I'm saying. I don't like crop tops, but I will use a crop top as an underneath shirt because then I'm not hot and super layery, but I didn't need to size up. This is a pretty roomy shirt, especially once you cut the collar off, uh, but I didn't notice I needed to size up unless you're wearing a big shirt underneath. But that's my little baby wing, and I skip the middle with the eyeliner. Okay. Let's add some mascara and let's get a move on here, okay? Are there colors anybody's been wanting to see? Let me know and we can grab those. I do have all of them. And if there's a blush you're wanting to see, I'm going to show you how to take your fall winter blush into spring today because I've been playing with it and it is a mixing. I mean, if you have a palette with multiple colors, play with those multiple colors. Play with them. All right, so I'm just going to get that coating on. I think I need a new one. I am low on everything. I just replaced my main highlight. So we're going to get this on. I wish I could speed up right here. But if there's a color that you guys have been wanting to see, but you keep forgetting, now's the time. Now is the time. I've been using the Schnockers out of our oil, and I'm really hoping that it's gonna come back for summer. I would love for it to come back for Mother's Day, but we'll see. Or Easter, I don't know, anything. I just want it back because I wanna buy more. I only bought one. I used to buy a lot of things. Um, a lavender purple shade for, bl for blush or lips. I can't do eyes because I already did, did this, but um, I will. For videos okay wiggle 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 let's get this on if you're so I can't wear the color plum on my my cheeks it makes me look like I got a bruise on my face and I like nude it has a bit of pink to it maybe we'll do that instead of because I've been, I love rosewood rosewood's my favorite I like it more than um, sandstone and that is usually my fall winter blush I don't know any upcoming sales or specials. They've been, they went crazy over the summer and into the fall with Sale of Palooza. Like they never do sales. And all of a sudden it was like, sale, sale, deal, deal. The release, release. Like, I was like, stop. <laughs> like, <laughs> don't stop. But wow. Um, because then I just feel like, yeah, they did a lot and it took, it didn't take the fun out of it, but it did take, it made you feel like there's always going to be another one coming and then pff, done, nothing. Like, I don't feel like they even, n no offense to Saint, but I just don't feel like their Black Friday deals were as, I don't know. I just, I thought, I feel like they've done better. <laughs> um... I love their makeup because the thing is, is that $16 for a foundation is such an incredible price. And yeah, it is. Okay, let's do our face. Boom, boom. I wish they'd come out with some new palettes that aren't limited edition. Remember, was anybody around when Saint was known as mascara? They had so many different kinds of palettes. I mean, this one was my favorite. They had a scalloped one. It was beautiful. And you didn't ever have to worry about... The print rubbing off. Ugh. I know that the black lace one, that rubbed off. This this uh, 007 palette, that print is rubbed off. And it just really troubles me because I'm like, don't. 
these were great. I would love new palettes, and we have been asking. So don't think we're not just sitting back being like, we'll get it when we get it. No, we're asking. <laughs> we're actively asking. All right. Um, we're going to go in. I'm going to use my blend brush, and I am going to color correct. I have not been using Demi or uh, Frenchie under my eyes lately, and I've been kind of really enjoying it, but I've been using my main highlight, which I think is a really good thing to talk about for mature women. Some people really love their Demi, but $22 for a Demi color is something that some people are like, I don't want to spend $22 on. I just want my $16 colors. So I've been playing around with it and we're going into Aspen now and I've been using my main highlight. Okay, what do I use to clean my palette? I spray our microfiber. So here's the deal with palettes. Some palettes are easier to clean than others. So when you have a dark palette or a shiny palette like this or the silver, these palettes are really easy to clean. And that's kind of the bonus to getting the silver. It is very easy to clean. These dark ones, let's see if this guy's dirty because they usually are. This one has a little bit of grime on it. Let me see. Girlfriend, what's going on? You're so needy. I will get the TV. I'm not going to leave the, the live because that means I'm like live <laughs> all right so i'm going to move these so we can clean it so this is how i clean them i wouldn't recommend spraying them with anything what i would do is take a microfiber or a paper towel grab your brush cleaner and spray your microfiber i don't want to cough and then you can just wipe it clean and it cleans off super simple super nice super easy it just Using a, a wet microfiber to me is the easiest way and that's how I do it. I just cleaned my friend's palette. It, it, it was a doozy of a palette, I tell you what. But yeah, so this is how I do it. Honey, what do you need? I, I can't help it. Bring me the remote and I'll tell you how. But see, so easy to clean when you do it that way. So microfiber or a paper towel, look at that. And then spray the towel with your stuff and that goes for the top it does it does the same thing for the top I love these embossed ones the black I would say when you clean it it will still look clean if you do the light colors while they're all very pretty even once you clean them let's spray this again even once you clean them I always get the darker ones because they're just so much easier but even once you clean them off they still have, it just, I don't know. They just show the wear a little more. I love them and they're so pretty, but I always pick the dark. I always do, unless it is shiny like this. All right, wrong remote. I need the skinny one. Sorry, baby. Okay, so that's how you clean your palettes. <laughs> you had trouble with my black one. Was it because it looked dirty. They do. I mean, it's makeup, so it's going to get on stuff. But the nice thing is it doesn't it doesn't stain clothes. So if you get it on your clothes, it doesn't stain your clothes. But cleaning them can be, it, it is pretty darn easy. I mean, this guy, I need to just replace a lot. But this guy just looks good all the time. It's crumbling, though. My trust is crumbling. But I have the blue, and this one was one of my favorite ones, and the maple. I will say, if you get a light one like this, you're probably gonna be like, it looks dirty all the time. And so I love the black embossed the most. This is one of my favorite ones. Okay, real quick, you're gonna touch this and then a menu's gonna pop up at the top. You're gonna go over one and then click that. All right, door. Okay, we're getting ready for Easter brunch too. That's a big thing this week is Easter brunch. Okay, let's do our makeup, okay? <laughs> All right, what else? Okay, let's get into this. So I already have Aspen on here, and so we're gonna go in and we're just gonna clean up around the nose where it's red. I've been trying new skincare, and I feel like skincare when you're trying to, the skincare on my skin has been amazing. Uh, my skin feels supple, it feels hydrated, it feels nice. I'm really mad I didn't use it this morning. It's supposed to be cleaning up my discoloration. This is, I have this guy here. It might be, it is what it is. This came in when I was pregnant. 
I'm really hoping, <laughs> thank you, Sherry. <laughs> I'm really hoping to clear up the scarring. That's, this is this, right, this one. This is what I want to clear up. This side is also very spotted. I would love for my skincare to take care of this. I think with skincare, when you're working with something that's going to be correcting or fixing or minimizing or whatever is going to happen, it's going to, you got to make a mess to clean a mess. You know, like when you're cleaning your kid's room, you got to pull it all out and make the room look like a tornado hit it and then you clean it up. So I feel like it's going to get a little more angry before it gets cleaned up and muted. I like adding my aspen to the top of this because I have some larger pores in this area. I have broken capillaries up here and I like that it's dense and it's going to hold my makeup on and I say that every time because I mean it. But I also like that I can correct this and it's not a heavy makeup. Like putting on a concealer, like putting on your foundation to essentially mute it because you still need a concealer to cover it. This gives me the ability to mute it without that heavy amount of makeup that your foundation has. And so I'm just taking this brush with what's left and I'm seriously just pushing this on and, and emptying it out and getting the redness pushed away. Okay, and now I forgot to turn on my Do Not Disturb. I'm going to go in on the fluffy and this brush right here, I love it. To me, a good makeup is a good brush. You can, I, it's kind of like when you use your makeup and you're like, gosh, I really don't like beauty blenders with this makeup. Don't use beauty blenders. With, it may work for some people, but not everybody. So finding your brush is going to do it. All right. So I'm going to go into my suede. I really need to melt it down. And then I've been touching into Nova and I'm going to take this little guy and then I have a couple spots coming in and this is just going to camouflage it. And because it's dense, it's going to hold the makeup on top of it, but it's not a foundation layer. It's really just a tone on your skin like that. It might look dirty. It's okay. We're going to grab some more. You want a light amount. You don't want your bristles ever sticking together. And then this guy, ugh, ugh. it is what it is. I got ivy creeping up with hyperpigmentation. 43 has not been kind to my skin. 43 has not. And so it just camouflages it a little bit. And then when I put on my foundation, it will hide it. And my contour also hides it. There are times where I will see your coloring. And I had I just color matched somebody the other day where they have freckles and hyperpigmentation. And so I recommended stone because freckles and skin tone can be tricky where you can be really, like my neck is always lighter than my face. You can be really bright under your freckles and then your freckles are what you kind of have to match to because if I were to match to your skin and disregard your freckles I, I take it all into account so if you sweep on your makeup to match my skin you're gonna see the makeup on the freckles does that make sense and then you'll be like I can see it I just was talking with another artist on the team who we cut she got color matched she got she got the makeup. She's like, I can see it. I don't like this. And so I said, can I see a picture? And immediately you could see it was the tone and you could see it on top of the freckles. And so we had to switch it. So sometimes I try to not overload my color matches, but sometimes they do have a lot. But I will take something like stone with somebody who has freckles and say, take a brush. Usually I would recommend a blend brush and take your contour and use it two ways. You can take your contour and you can grab it and you can sweep it on ahead of time to help work with the freckles and work with the coloring. And then you can go into your main highlight and you can go in and put that on and then contour like contour. And so you can use your contour like a camouflager because I mean they're pretty close I just love suede does that make sense okay I'm <laughs> cheekbone cheekbone camouflage well yes I, that's the other reason why I got away from using indigo is this this spot here indigo has red tones and it will sometimes pull it through and it'll pull my other pigmentation too so as my skin's been maturing over the last couple years since I got into my 40s Indigo has been another reason why I can't use it is because it is pulling my stuff through. And so I'm hoping the skincare helps. I am not sharing the name of my skincare. I, 
I'm, I've said that a couple times because I want to know how it works with me and my discoloration, not so much the product itself, but how it works with the discoloration first before I start telling people about it. Because I don't want to be like, this is going to take away this, this, this. This is what it's called. And then everybody gets it and maybe it doesn't work. And then, so that's why I'm kind of keeping it kind of close. All right, we're going to go in. I'm going to use the powder brush. I decided to try the powder brush because of Merit because of OG, I'm trying to find the brush. Because of Merit, because of OG, all of these, I'm trying to find the brush and I can't find it anywhere. My desk is a disaster. This whole room is a disaster. It's on my list this week. But all the brushes I'm seeing people use with foundations and with creams looks like this. Oh, I will. So if you pay attention to my shorts, not just my tutorials, I just did my one week check-in I did get some color over a weekend, so it's a, anyways, I am doing every Friday or Saturday posts with check-ins every week. So check in Fridays and Saturdays to see my progress because I am actively sharing it as I go because I just think it's fun. <laughs> so I am sharing it. I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of steps. That's one thing I've learned with discoloration, with makeup or skincare, there's a lot of steps. So I, I know I'm zoomed in so much, but I'm showing my skin. But I will say it's more steps than I like. But I think the older you get, sorry, we need a little more steps. Like we got to do some things. And so there's, I'm not going to lie, there's a lot of steps. And I'm not getting paid or given this stuff for free either. I just saw a friend using it. And then over time, I've seen her skin brighten and minimize on her discoloration. And I felt like her discoloration was very similar to mine. And I've seen over the last year and a half, I've just been just paying attention and being like, it's changing. And then I started finally talking to her about it. Anyway, all right. So the powder brush. I don't, it's not really about this end. I do like this end okay, but it's this end. And I think it's because it's flat and it's dense. This is a good medium to full coverage brush. So if you're not a medium to full coverage girl, this is not the brush for you. I do think this brush is different than any of our other brushes. Mrs. Barris, hello. How is Mr. Barris? And my husband fully stole my Thanksgiving mug. He uses it all the time. <laughs> he loves that mug. <laughs> But this brush, I will say, is different than any of our other brushes. I would even go so far as to say it's different from our detail brush. I think that they're very similar. But I've had other artists on my team grab this brush because I talked about it. And even they say, great for mature skin. Great for mature skin. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going in. And I'm going to go into Athens first. And we're going to tap in. We're not clumping it together, but you can see it on the tips of the bristles. And I'm going to grab a little bit of white peach with it. And I'm going right down here. And then I'm going to pull it down my neck. And this is just going to give me coverage because I have a little bit of discoloration down here and breakouts. And old acne scarring is down there. So I just... So because my neck is lighter than my face and right now bronzer is just going to turn it orange. So I take a little bit of my brightening and I put it at the base of my jawline to help bridge it down here. And then I can blend it down here and it doesn't look weird. That makes sense? All right, now I'm going to go just into Athens. Not clumping together, but you can see the makeup. And that's when I'm going to go up here. So my scarring, I have dots, but in this area here, there's textured scarring where it's deep because I was a picker and it was cystic acne and we know, have you seen seal? <laughs> I like to also say texture is texture. I'm never going to find a skincare that's going to get rid of texture, especially scarring texture. And so using a brush like this has helped camouflage that texture by pressing it into my skin. There's one specific scar. So when I smile, it dimples in. And so I'm like, oh, maybe I look like I've got a dimple. I don't. It's a scar, but I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. Like my, I thought this guy showed up. This is a hyperpigmentation, but I'm going to call it a beauty mark. And so I like using this dense short end to just press into my skin. 
And I don't bring it, I don't need to bring it up here. I'm going to be adding contour and I'm going to be adding blush back here, maybe even some bronzer back here. I And that's all foundation. So I'm not adding any foundation color up here. There's just no need for it. But I am pressing this. Do you see how it just, hmm, just good stuff, okay? Bringing it down, bringing it up. I'm going to grab a little bit of balm. I love my balm. I do. We're putting it on the finger. You can see the sheen. And I'm going to put this under my eye, up into the corner, and following where I see I have my fine lines coming in, my crow's feet coming in. And this, I'm just going to set in here. We're going to grab that brush. See how it has that little foot? We're going to grab a little bit of our main highlight here. And I'm going to come up. Okay. Ill Maquillage Primer is one. Is it? Okay. I know which one you're talking about. Not going to lie. That is, I have a hard time with that, with that brand. I don't know why. I don't know if it's more of, you see how just my main highlight helps with that? And I'm going to add brightening to it instead of using a corrector. If correcting is something you just don't want to deal with, just bring your main highlight up. Ill Maquillage, I've seen some videos, not all, where when they sweep it on, you could see a filter over it. And I, I get upset about it. <laughs> I don't care if people use filters, but don't use filters when you're talking about makeup. That's all I'm saying. But it just evens out the skin tone. Really nice. All right. So a good color match is going to help. If I notice you have some texture and you have some mature skin, maturing skin, I'm going to bump you up a shade that might look a touch too dark, but as it blends out, it's going to come together because this color doesn't always look like it's my skin, but as we blend it out, it thins out and then it matches my skin tone. But I do go a touch darker because I have mature skin and if I go to my skin tone or a touch too light, it's going to look textury and I'm going to look washed out. Okay, we're going to grab into Athens, a little bit of white peach. We hit that jawline right there. And then pulling it down over that scarring right there. There we go. Grabbing a little more, not a lot. I mean, you can even barely tell that it's on the brush, but I'm just going to go over my scarring here, grabbing that balm, putting it under the eye. Under the eye. I'm telling you, if you're going in between, if you're between seasons, you can take your palette and make it work. So you can, if you have bronzer in your palette and you're getting into your summer shade, what I just did with my brightening, do that with your bronzer. So you can take your main highlight and tap once into Bella bronzer and it'll deepen it just a little bit and you can bridge up. All right, I'm going to use that foot. We're going to put a little bit of my main highlight on and I am going to tap this over my discoloration. Tapping it over. Boom, boom, boom. Boom! Easy. So if you have mature under eyes, I mean, I'm getting the, cro the stuff, okay? I get, I'm getting it. I'm 43. It's going to happen. And so if you have that and you don't want to have all the color correcting demis and whatnot, try just tapping a little bit, but definitely pair it with balm. Balm under your eyes is going to help with creasing. It's going to help with hydration. It's, I like that you can hydrate point to point. So if you're just dry around your nose, add a little bit of balm. If you have dry skin and your under eyes look textury, add some balm and just point to point hydrate it with balm and it'll work really well with your skin I love this brush some people do and I like to say this because I've seen the returns some people do have a hard time when there's this is different than all of the other saint brushes and I think that there's an application difference with it and so when you're used to it it's kind of like going from what you were used to with your makeup to using saint I think what happens is you're used to applying it a certain way with the blush and bronzer brush or the 3D brush. And then when you try this, you're like, oh, wow, that put on way too much. This is a medium to full coverage brush. It is. But after you've applied it and if you feel like you've put too much on, don't apply more product to it. Just blend it down. This is for giving makeup. 
And so if you over apply it, you can blend it down. You can use a damp beauty blender. Don't buy Saints, they're overpriced. Go get an e.l.f. one that's way more affordable. Or you can use a fluffy brush and you can just blend it down like that. There's ways around it. So I will say if you're used to your makeup being a light to medium and you try this brush, you're gonna find that it's fuller coverage, okay? This is the powder brush. And if you have oily skin, you can buy a collection with this brush and it comes with a setting powder. I don't recommend using the powder with this brush though. I don't know why they're a collection. Never apply powder with this brush. <laughs> but it saves you, I think, $11 if you like setting powder. All right, we're gonna get into contouring. No, let's brighten. We're gonna go just right down the line. Main highlight, brightening highlight. So I'm gonna use the same brush. We're grabbing into white peach. All right, we got it on the end. And I this is this is the way I've been doing it lately, and it it works for me. I just do that. <laughs> and then I start pulling this over my brows using that little foot end. And then I just blend it into a big old circle. And I don't worry about it being perfect right here because once I add my contour, they're gonna blend together. And so I let it be a little underblended. Then if there's anything left, I'll hit right here just to add a touch of brightening to my Cupid's bow. This is super pretty. And just t instead of an illuminator, because we have the things, we don't need shimmer getting trapped in all that stuff. Just add a little bit of brightening there and then I'll take and I'll add some if it, if it shows on my chin. All it is is the reflecting light and we're accentuating it. And so the high points, boom, 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 boom. Boom. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna stop. We're gonna do the nose. Afterwards, I'm gonna use my finger. I'm gonna stick with this end of the brush. I really just use this end. This is great for getting into the eye when I go to add my brightening later. So I'm going in, this is cedar. I This is dense, so I press into it a little hard, but I don't sweep through. I just tap it in, there it is. And we're gonna go here and here. And then we're gonna use that foot to bridge it together, that little foot. We bridge it together and you can turn your four, your five head to a four head or whatever you wanna do, add dimension. And we just bring that down. I'm gonna take the back end of the foot right here and we're gonna pull that brightening into the contour. Look at how pretty that is. So you can have essentially one layer of makeup. You've got your contour, you've got a brightening highlight. When they come together, they create a really nice balanced dimensional covered forehead. I love doing my forehead. I'm good at my forehead. <laughs> Am I good at doing my nose? Not lately. <laughs> Not lately. All right, we're gonna go in on the side of this brush right here. And we're gonna go just above this natural shadow here. And I go up. Everybody's face shape is different. If you go on Pinterest, you can find different places to put contour based on your face shape. Do not pay attention to your face shape. I don't know what shape my face is. Sometimes it's round. Sometimes I'm an oval. I guess sometimes I'm a heart. I don't know. But I will go and I will try all the different placements. And it's really this area you're really wanting to pay attention to. It's just the cheek placement you're paying attention to. Your nose, it's pretty straightforward and you can play with your contour and do all sorts of things. But it's the cheek you're really wanting to focus on placement. And so I like... My hyperpigmentation is right on my contour. And so I like to use cedar or stone or ash or olive with my hyperpigmentation or freckling because it hides it nicely. Is it always gonna, it's, is it gonna be there and show every once in a while? Yeah. But hopefully my skincare will take care of it. So right now I'm taking my contour and I'm bringing it around kind of like a bronzer. And I'm just bringing it up like that. And you wanna flick into the hairline like that, and it just gives things a little lift, okay? And you could easily punch it up if you want to by adding more, under blend it, under blend it, okay. Keep playing with your forehead, Mrs. Barris. Keep playing with the forehead. Just take a brush like this and put it on and just put a big old circle here and a big old circle here, and then you just tap into a bigger circle, bridge, bigger circle bridge, bigger circle, bring it down the temples. Try that, but tap it, tapping, tapping, tapping. All right, I'm gonna use my finger on my nose. I use my ring finger. We put that on, dee, 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 and we're gonna go right here. 
I go on the top side, follow that to my brow, bringing it down, and I'm gonna square off the tip. If I don't do that, I feel like I have this really long round nose. And then I have a bump right here that's just been really ticking me off lately. And then I'm just tapping this, using that foot to fluff up to the brow. This is why I don't do my brows first. It's because this part right here, doing my forehead and doing my nose, it just messes it up. All right, I'm gonna bridge it together. And then we're gonna use our pinky. And we're gonna go right down the middle. I'm gonna go across the tip here, up 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 and then I'm going to switch fingers and we're just going to tap it out and that's how I straighten my nose that looks way better than it did yesterday when I was playing with indigo <laughs> indigo just I it doesn't look right on my nose all right that's all the that 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 that's my nose. this bump right here just you guys probably didn't even notice it so I do want to just say I notice it I know it's there and it bugs me you probably didn't notice it and that goes with your face too everybody has that something where they're like I don't like that one little thing it just bothers me a little bit and then nobody even knew <laughs> nobody even knew I'm gonna grab a little bit and I'm just gonna go right in front of my earlobe here and then pull not a lot not a lot not you don't even see it on the brush in front of that earlobe all right, let's do, somebody said lavender, so I'm gonna go grab nude. I like nude over plum. I never use plum. I don't. They look really, really similar. This is, this is plum, okay? They look super similar, okay? And then here is, Nude, they look the same. Here is nude. Do you see how it has just a touch of pink? Like it's so subtly different, but that extra purple in it makes me look like I have a bruise. It's the weirdest thing, like that subtle difference, just to me has a little bit more of a rosiness in nude than plum. That will look like a bruise on my face. No thanks. No thanks. And then I'm going to be using pink grapefruit because I love pink grapefruit. All right. Going in. Bang, bang, boom. All right. We're going to use these two colors together. I've been pairing these two together and it's really, really pretty. This is rosewood. I like it. All right. We're going to go in. I'm going to stick with the powder brush and I'm going to go in first into nude. We're going to grab a little bit. I don't even know if there's enough. Boom. Isn't it funny how it just barely shows up? But it's very pretty. Nude is a very pretty, I would say it's an all season color, but in the spring we want some more pink. This doesn't pull my scarring through, which is nice. And I like my pinks, but that's nude. I would say build lightly, build lightly. All right, then you can grab a little bit of the pink and you can add that in to punch it up into spring. But build and tap lightly. That's very, I don't like, I'm an everyday makeup kind of gal. <laughs> All right, grabbing into nude. I'm gonna come over here and let's see how it goes with that hyperpigmentation. Boom. It is pretty. I smile so you can see where your apples are. It is very pretty, and it's not messing with my hyperpigmentation a lot, which is nice. I don't use this color very often. Okay, grabbing a little bit of pink and adding that to the top part of my cheekbone. Ooh. All right, that was a lot. We'll just add it over here. Balance, balance. <laughs> oh, there's stuff in my hair. Okay, there we go. Not bad, let's line, oh, let's powder, let's set. Let's set this baby. All right, I'm gonna use Urban Decay and then setting powder. While your face is still damp, while it's still damp, grab a fluffy brush, grab your vanilla dust. I keep two because I use the heck out of it. And then you start outside and work it in. That way you don't end up with a bunch of powder texture. 
especially if you have large pores or really crepey under eyes. If that's the case, you don't want to directly press powder on when you think your brush is empty, you do that. All right, while it's still damp, because it's still a little bit damp, we're gonna go out here and then we work it back in. I go in on my forehead first. I would say when you start working in, go where the least texture is on your face. And then when it's empty, you can go in under your eyes. Okay. And then if you feel like you have any powder, texture, add a little bit of extra setting spray. It should be moderately gone at that point. All right, we're gonna do lips. I'm gonna use that foot into my contour. We're gonna go under the lip, over the lip, under, over. Okay. I know it, I, you know, it's funny. There's just colors that you just love and you'll always grab. And nude, I use and then I like it. But it's not, it. I like it. But it's not one where I'm like, I like rose one where I just, I love how I feel in it. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I like nude. It's just not one I always grab. I always add more to nude. And I think that's what it is. I like a pink cheek. And so I'll use nude, but I'll always add something to nude. Kind of like I can use bronzer, but I'll always add a pink, like some people use bronzer. I will always add to it. I've tried to use bronzer as a blush and I always add to it. All right, we're gonna line with nude and we're gonna fill in with the pink. All right, so line it. Hmm, you can't even see it. I can't see it. We're still gonna do it. You never know. All right, so lining, not outer lining, just lining with nude. And I added that shadow underneath so I don't have to outer line. Just gives that look of a curl. Okay. I have seen some people make some serious faces lining their lips, so I'm always hyper aware. I've seen some weird faces with lining. <laughs> just, I just can't. <laughs> All right, we're going to grab that pink grapefruit color and we're going to add that to nude. Okay. Rub it in. I will say, because they're satins, your lips are going to look dry. You need something to go over it and that's balm or I'm going to use oil. Pretty. That's pretty. That's pretty. Saint Oil. It's iridescent. It does not translate. Pink grapefruit is such a pretty color and it can be great on its own, but it can also be paired with so many different things. So I'm just going to take oil over it and there we go. I always, I do outer line my cupid's bow with oil, a touch, and I just think it makes it look a little fuller, but that's it. Okay, let's slap on, I want to add a little bit of brightening. And I'm going to use that same brush. So this is how I've been using the other end of the brush. We're going to go in the tip. And we're going to come just under that trough and work it up to the middle. And then you can pull it in. And just make it in this little general area and then pull, 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 pull. I prefer doing this over shimmer. I don't use a lot of illuminators. And that's because... I have oily skin and illuminators just look greasy on me. And so I would say if you're mature or oily and you're just dying to use an illuminator, grab a cream illuminator. But isn't that so pretty? And I just added this much. And you just start under that trough and up. And then you follow in, pulling, pulling, pulling. And then really just focusing on that orbital bone and then in, orbital bone and then in and clean it up. If you need, I need a little more for the outside. But when we add, we're just, I mean, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Hit that orbital bone first. I don't like to apply creams directly where I have things. I go between for me and then I bring it in. But living on that orbital bone and adding that brightness just, I like cream makeups. I would think if something ever happened to Saint, I would 
go to a cream makeup somewhere else. I don't know where. I tried Merit and it just, I don't know what the consistency difference was, but it just looked really, it looked like butter on my skin. <laughs> it, it didn't have the same kind of finish that Saint has. All right, we're going to go in on these brows. I don't know. I, I like Saint because I'm not digging through a bag. You spend, if you're a makeup bagger, 70% of your time doing your makeup digging through a bag. Not doing your makeup. Most of your time is looking for that next thing. And that's why I like the idea of cream sticks because cream is good. Cream makeup is a good makeup. It's a really good option when you have skin that's changing. So if you're in your late 20s and things are just like not the way they were a couple years ago when you were 22, try a, try a cream makeup. But digging through a bag, I don't think I'll ever go back to. And that's why I like Saint is because I'm not, nothing's lost. It's all just in one really easy spot. All right, I'm using two colors. I need to switch them both out, but I'm using Trust and Oak. I like Trust. I tried using just Oak and I wet the brush. It was just too light. I like a dark brow, even when I was blonde. And I use my brows to lift my eyes and to make them bigger. I pull it way out past the tail and then I come in past the inner corner. I was watching flatliners who remembers flatliners this weekend we're actually it takes my husband and I a couple days to watch a movie because we're tired and so we watch it usually takes us about three days to finish a movie and we're watching we're going between two we watched poor things which is the I don't, I don't know it's weird it was weird I didn't love it um and we're watching flatliners also <laughs> And I don't know why we watch two movies at the same time, <laughs> but go watch it and go look at Julia Roberts' eyebrows. And that's where I was like, I'm doing something right because her brows, her brows come in like here. Her brows come in well, well past her inner corners. And it was, I was watching it and I was like, okay. I love her eyebrows in that in that movie and I was just like hot dog like I thought about bringing mine in even farther but hers seriously line up here with the inside of the nose not the nostril to the corner I mean I'm supposed to start mine here and I bring it in about a millimeter or two but if you're wanting to make your eyes look a little bigger and a little more youthful and you're playing with your brows I say bring them in this way about a millimeter or two and then bring them far out and and as straight as you can and it'll give you so much room for your eyeshadow out here so I could take let me just comb these out and just get that done all right you could take now that my brows are on my eyeshadow looks nice but I could easily take that fluffy brush and I could add more color out here Look at that, I just added all a whole like bushel of an eyeshadow brush out here. <laughs> just by adding an extra tail length onto my brows. And you wouldn't know it until the brows are on. Isn't that pretty? All right, I'm gonna take Angel's Landing and I'm gonna pop this up here. Angel's Landing, I'm gonna say is has more fleckiness than Riviera. Right here. I'm going to grab a little bit of Riviera on the inner corner of the lid. Not the, not here. I don't like it here. It gets all clumpy and gross. Then you can take balm. This is my favorite thing about Riviera. You can take balm and add it to the mid of the lid. Okay. Take it. And we're going to go boom, boom, boom to the mid. Grab it again to the mid. We're going to go back in to Riviera and it just gives it a little little kick in the ass look at that we just went from day to night 
just by adding, oh, sorry, Angel's Landing. Day to night. Boom. Easy. I love Angel's Landing. It's so, so pretty. So you can take an everyday, everyday, going to work look, add it. Add just a little bit of shimmer to your lid. Angel's Landing is so, so pretty. And there's, um, I want to say Aries. That one is really hard to pick up, but you could do that if you want it really bright. If you like a good bright eye. Ooh, I think the sun is lightening our clouds. <laughs> so Aries is this guy right here. If you wanted to make, look at how pretty that is. But you can see there's a film on it. Let's see if I can pick some up and we'll see what happens. And you could go a little bit brighter. I don't know. It's whatever you want. But I really like Angel's Landing the most. I can't put too much on because I got to take a picture of this for the group. So if you're not in my Facebook group, there's a lot of action going on in there. <laughs> you can help me pick my eye looks. But this is really pretty. And I like that you can take and wet, you can take Sedona and make it your transition color. You can make it your deeper crease, lower brow bone color. You can get it wet and really smoke it out. And it's three colors, but it's one. And then adding Angel's Landing and using that balm. The balm is so good for some. It's really hydrating for your lips. It's really great for your under eyes and dry spots if you just get, um, is it eczema? I wouldn't recommend it with psoriasis. But eczema, if you get eczema, my daughter has eczema. And I'll add a little bit of balm to it because she always gets it on her chin here. But we put medicine on it. And if it gets dry, I just add a little bit. And it just kind of smooths it out. But every summer she gets this massive chin breakout of eczema. But the balm is good for so many things. Punching up shimmers, under eyes, dry spots, lips. It does more than one thing. Okay. Oh, my nails. I'm going to tell you, the nail lady was not happy with me. She thought I was just getting a fill. And I was like, I want this. And I'm sure they all cringe when they have pictures. But I just did fun little Easter nails. I was in a hurry, but I didn't care. Anyways. Our French tips back. I feel like they're making a comeback too. But that's it. We did an hour. <laughs> oh my gosh, we did more than an hour. Oh boy. But that is only on Mondays. And hopefully, now that the kids are in school, school, because we're not homeschooling anymore, that's why I haven't been around, is just healing from not having homeschool. We had such a beautiful little experience, but it was time for them to move into school and I had a I, I don't do well with change <laughs> and I, I sometimes just really when things are changing too much to like we went from driving an hour to school to then homeschooling to then it's going into public school and everything else that changes with life on a daily basis anyways I shut down and I hermit up I don't go out I don't I don't call my friends I <laughs> I, I shut down with change and it, it I just don't do well with it. And so I have been a little bit quiet just because I've been processing my changes. <laughs> but I should be back next Monday. Um, it's the first of the month, so I'll definitely be live because it's April. I can't believe it's April. But April, I'm trying to figure out to do a Mother's Day giveaway I want to gift a face to a mom and so it's not going to be per se a giveaway to you guys my customers and my friends it's more of I want to hear about a mom that you think would love a face and I'm going to send her I'm going to send her a face um eyes fate like all of it just a mom that you that you love that thinks yeah so that's what I'm going to try to be doing. But anyways, that's the face. Thank you for having me try nude. It is very pretty. And uh, sometimes, like, the light hits, and it's just nice. Okay, that's it. We didn't get any weirdos this time. Maybe I needed a break just to get the weirdos to go to sleep. But we got no weirdos today, which is great. <laughs> Have... A great day. Oh, and a happy Easter. Have a happy Easter because I'm not going to see you guys till after Easter. I'm doing Bridgerton brunch. 
I love my Bridgerton brunch on Easter Saturday. We do family day, Easter hunt, big old Bridgerton style brunch, and then Sunday's family day. But have a great Easter and have a great day.